I'm going to show you another hand rule now, which is kind of just an extension of the hand rule that we just learned a little while ago. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit different, though. Let's, let's draw a picture here first before I explain how this thing works. Here's a piece of steel or, or some kind of ferromagnetic material. Technically, with what I'm about to show you, we don't even need this, but the effect gets magnified if we have this present. Now, I'm going to wrap some wire around this ferromagnetic material. You see that I've got the wire kind of going up around in the front and then down in the back like this. See what I'm trying to do there with my limited artistic ability? See what I'm trying to do? It's only taken 20 years to figure that out. We've got a battery attached here. This would be the negative end of the battery. This would be the positive end of the battery. Now, again, that piece of steel doesn't technically need to be there, but A, it makes the diagram a little bit easier to see what's going on if the piece of steel is there, and B, it does magnify the effect if there's a piece of steel in there. It kind of stores the magnetic field generated by this wire. Now, technically, we could use the hand rule that we've already learned, the wire grasp rule, to figure out what polarity this would become. This would become an electromagnet, right, with a north pole and a south pole. And we could use the wire grasp rule to figure that out because this wire generates a magnetic field that can be found by the wire grasp rule. But there's another rule that we can learn, a second hand rule that we can learn that is easier to use in this context than the wire grasp rule. No, we're going to call this one the coil rule. We use the same variables. There's the thumb and there's the bent fingers, but the way that it works is in reverse. So we're going to say instead of thumb, remember the, the uh, wire grasp rule, thumb was in the direction of the moving charge, fingers were in the direction of the magnetic field. This time, we're going to stick our thumb in the direction of the magnetic field and our fingers in the direction of the current. So exactly the opposite of what you've been doing earlier today. We got electrons leaving this battery going clockwise. That means they're going up in the front and then down in the back. Up in the front, down in the back, right? Nothing to do with magnetism. This is the way they're going because of the way the battery is set up. So what I want you to do now, want everybody to do this, take a piece of paper, a piece of scrap paper. You don't have one, I'll give you one. Take a piece of scrap paper and roll it up. Make it into a coil. This is your coil of wire. In fact, if you want to make it really pretty, you can take a piece of tape and tape it up like this. This is what you should end up with. So you see up on the board here, our coil of wire. Now we have a coil of wire, or at least our arts and craft version of our coil of wire in your hand. Hey, I want you now to label this coil of wire. And this is going to sound really silly, but I want you to do it. Because I'm telling you, people mess this up. I want you to take a pen or a marker or a pencil, and I want you to write the word front on it. I don't care where you write it, write the word front. Should look like this. Yes. Absolutely, you can. You can't bring it in with you, but you can make it while you're there, sure. Maybe. So we've got the word front written on it. I want you to orient this coil of wire that you've just made, this little arts and craft version of the coil of wire that you've just made, so that you're looking at the word front. Got it? So I'm looking at it like this, like you guys are. Yeah, I'm going to hold mine like this. So I'm actually looking at the back of mine, but you guys are looking at the front of, of mine. You guys need to have yours oriented the exact same way as I do. Now, what I want you to do is stick your fingers, your left fingers, because we're talking about electron current. Remember earlier, we, we briefly talked about conventional current, the flow of positive charge. We're talking about electron current here, so we're going to use the left hand. But remember, it's the opposite of the wire grasp rule. The coil rule says, instead of thumb in the direction of the current, my fingers are going to go in the direction of the current. So my fingers are going to point up in the front. Fingers point up in the front. See, this is where, this is where the uh, twisting, the contortions of the body start, right? Fingers need to point up in the front. If you need to turn around to do that, go ahead and do that. Your fingers aren't pointing up in the front. Oh, you get the front turn around, okay. Fingers point up in the front. Now, listen, your thumb has to be at 90 degrees here. Fingers are up in the front, bend them. Your thumb will point in the direction of the magnetic field. 
Which way is your fingers are pointing up in the back there? Oh, you get it. Oh, I see. You know what? You guys, what did I say about the word front? Look at it. Look at it. Don't put it on the other side. Don't put the word front in the back. Otherwise, you would call it back. Put the word front in the front. Yeah. Literally. Literally. Look at the word front and stick your fingers pointing up on the word front. Are your fingers pointing up on the word? No, fingertips, fingertips. No, because your fingertips like this. Don't move them up like this, like this. Your fingertips have to point up on the word front. And then you're not going to move your fingertips. They're glued to the word front. And you're going to bend your, but you're going to bend your fingers such that your fingertips stay in the same place, but your thumb comes around like this. What? So my fingers are up in the front and my thumb points towards the, using the wrong hand there. Oh, it doesn't matter what hand? Yeah, absolutely. It's electron current, so it's, so it's left hand. Thumb points towards the, towards the right. That means the magnetic field inside this coil points towards the right inside the coil the magnetic field points towards the right now if we were to draw it outside it would extend around like this tell me which end is north and which end is south north is on the right because right. outside the magnetic field goes from north to south inside the magnetic field actually goes from south to north as the domains would point. Oh, I see that. This is how works. That's how the electromagnet works. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Fingers, fingertips on the word front. Don't put them up like this. Don't move them around. Okay, don't put the word front in the back or on the side. Put the word front in the front and stick your fingertips right on the word front. Bend them like this. Thumb points toward the right automatically. Magnetic field inside the coil points in the direction of the thumb, which is to the right. Yep. Let's try another one. Let's try another example here. Let's say this time we've got, there's our piece of steel or piece of iron or whatever it is. We got our battery. We're going to set up our battery in the exact same way. So this is the this is the negative side. This is the positive side. Current's going to go clockwise again, like this. Current goes clockwise. Should be the exact same thing, right? Where do my fingertips need to point this time? On the word front, pointing down. Fingertips pointing down, right on the word front. Bend your hand around like this. Thumb points to the left. So the magnetic field inside this coil, inside the coil, points to the left. That means this is going to be the North Pole. This is going to be the South Pole. The exact same scenario, except start trying to memorize this. You're going to get all messed up because this is the exact same scenario, except the wire, the coil of the wire was kind of reversed here, right? The wire was in the front first on this one. It was in the back first on this one. And that reversed the polarity of our electromagnet. Really? Yeah, question? Um, no, you, like, you've probably given more context than, than what you just asked. Um, would we be asked for the direction of the magnetic field inside or outside? I mean, possibly, possibly would. If you were asked for inside, it's to the left. If you were asked for outside, it would be to the right. Uh, what you'd be more likely asked in a question like this is, which end is north, which end is south? Okay, and then, you know, we do whatever we want. We want to look at inside because that's the way our rule works. Um, but if you had some way of doing it differently, you'd still get the same answer for polarity, even though the field is in the opposite direction. Make sense? Try another one. So here's, 
are set up. There is a battery there, but I'm not telling you which end is positive, which end is negative. All I'm going to tell you is that this is the north end of this electromagnet. This is the south end. I want you to tell me which way the current goes, and I want you to tell me which way the battery goes as a result of that. We would stick our thumb. Let's go find that page again. There we are. We would stick our, our, fi our fingers sorry, in the direction of the current. We don't know that, right? We don't know the current. Is it in the front? Is it to the right? Or is it to the left? Don't know. But we do know that my thumb goes inside the coil from south to north, because that's the direction of the magnetic field inside. So let's stick our thumb down. Which way do my fingers need to point in the front? To the right. So that means the magnetic field would go to the right and the front, and then this way. That means this would be the negative terminal, and this would be the positive terminal. Got it? How about this one? What if we had a permanent magnet here? Now we have a piece of steel that has wire wrapped around it. Has a battery. I'm not going to tell you which way the battery is. I'm going to tell you that whatever polarity of this or whatever direction the current in this electromagnet goes, it produces a force of repulsion. There's repulsion with a permanent magnet. So let's work through this. If this is a force of repulsion, what do we know about this electromagnet here? Go ahead, man. The left side is south. If the left side is south, then the right side has to be north. And if the left side is south and the right side is north, we would stick our thumb from south to north, which is towards the right. Fingers point, put your fingers on the word front. They point up in the front. It means the current would go like this, down and around clockwise like this, and it means that the battery would be set up like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way I remember that is that the negative terminal of the battery has the short end. The positive terminal, right, the positive, the one that has a vertical line in the symbol, positive, is the one with the longest vertical line. Okay. Oftentimes, I'll be honest with you, oftentimes on a test they actually label that positive and negative for you, but we want to remember it just in case. Let's give you one more example, and then we'll let you work on those questions for homework again, if there's any time left. Now, what I'm about to tell you is this is, a, this, is, this is a light bulb. What I'm about to tell you is uh, a little bit beyond what you actually have to know at this point. It's coming, but because we're doing something that can be really relevant to something later on, I just want to bring in an example of that right now, okay? Um, you're going to have to trust me on this, on one part of it right now, though, until I give you a little bit more background on it. The part that you got to trust me on is, that, is this. When I move this, if I push this magnet nearby, push it towards it, then what I get is an electric current generated in this wire. That's the generator effect. Okay? We're producing electricity from magnetism. Again, that concept comes a little bit later on, but I want to use what we've just learned as a part of that concept. Now, what you've got to remember is that when I move this nearby, this will always, this magnetic field that's produced in here, and there will be a magnetic field produced there, will always act to oppose that motion. So in other words, this becomes north. It doesn't start off that way, but when I push a magnet nearby this coil, I produce a magnet right here. 
it becomes north to oppose that motion. That makes sense? If it becomes south, it wouldn't oppose that motion, would it? It would attract it. All right. If this becomes north, I want to know which way the current goes through that light bulb. Does it go this way or does it go this way? That's your task right now. Which way, which way does the current go through that light bulb? If you trust me that this becomes north as a result of me moving this magnet nearby. Give you a second to figure that out and then uh, we'll do it. We'll go over it as a group here. All right, so let's have a look at this. Uh, we know that if that end is going to be north, and you don't know why this end is going to be north yet. I ask you to trust me on that. It becomes north. It does become north. It will every single time when I move this magnet nearby. But don't worry about why it becomes north right now. It just does for now. This end is going to become south, of course. Which way is the current going to go to produce that north and south pole here? Well, if we have our thumb going from south to north, why is it south to north? Does the magnetic field go from north to south? Inside the magnet, it goes from south to north. So stick your thumb from south to north, which is towards the right. My fingertips go on the word front. They're going to automatically point up in the front, which means they're going to go down like this, and the electric current is going to go clockwise through that light bulb. Now, in the end, that light bulb is going to light up whether the current is going clockwise or counterclockwise. But... It's, um, that's the way it would go in this case. 